In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are very well. Today it is Wednesday, the 11th day of May, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. I want us to look at something that we had started some time back. Of course, it is the series of growth in faith and what it is that we need to do to remain strong in our faith. I have said this before, and I will never get tired of saying it again and again and again, that spiritual development it is not something that happens to us by chance. It is something that we purposely work towards. We work to develop spiritually. And it is not something simple. We plan and work very hard towards it. And therefore, today I want us to start a series that may take us three or something days about spiritual gifts. The faith we have, it is a gift that God gives unto us. As we seek to follow Jesus and to be used by Jesus Christ, we must purposely and freely utilize all that he has made available to us, the gifts. Remember, when all is said and done, it is about Christ, not us. You may have noted something I keep on saying, that we were never called to be in church than to be in Christ. Unfortunately, today in the 21st century, most of us Christians, I'll say most of us because not all of us, but most of us are more in church than we are in Christ. In fact, I was reading some wordings from uh, a writer. Uh, he's called um, uh, A.B. Simpson. This is what he says. Listen to this. Very beautiful. Once it was the blessing. Now it is the Lord. Once it was the feeling. Now it is the word. Once his gifts I wanted, now the giver own. Once I sought for healing, now himself alone. Now, what is Simpson saying? That we need a mental shift. We depart from the giftedness and giftedness and talents and focus our attention on Jesus. One of the greatest blessings that Jesus has given to his church and to us as individuals is the gifts of the Spirit. Now, we may want to ask, why has he done this? The Bible has this to say about the vital role that they play in the lives of the believers. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to observe I mean to serve one another. So why are we given the spiritual gifts? According to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it is to serve one another. But there is something bigger than that. Spiritual gifts always enables us to grow in the knowledge of Christ. I am saying this because sometimes we pay more attention to the gift than the giver. To the extent that we want them to come and replace Jesus. 
it does not work that way. Some people get quite sidetracked with the spiritual gifts and become more obsessed with the gifts than with Jesus. We, began, we begin, or as believers, begin to follow signs and wonders instead of signs and wonders following believers. Hope you get it. Now, this is a sign of spiritual immaturity. When you pay more attention to something else other than Christ, it means that you have not matured properly to be able to know what it is supposed to be paid attention to. So we say, when we pay more attention to the gift than the giver, it only portrays how immature spiritually that we are. Now, attaining the spiritual gifts is not the goal. How I wish I can say this a million times. Attaining spiritual gifts, it is not the goal. They are actually a gateway. They are not a hobby to play with. They are actually tools to build with, weapons to fight with. We will be more effective as we put them into use for God's glory and not for our own in contradistinction with what we do today because we are more obsessed with what we can do for our own, for our edification, and not for the greater glory of God. Spiritual gifts are to be used. We use them for the glory of God, not to batter others, not as weapons to kill each other, but as weapons to fight the main battle of the ungodly. It is possible to let a gift go unused. Very possible. In doing this, however, you disobey God and cheat the church of a blessing. Very sad. For this reason, we must use those gifts he has given us. In fact, it must be insulting to God for us to demean some gifts his Holy Spirit has instilled in our life by saying that it just isn't important enough to use. We must use the gifts. Each spiritual gift has a special place in the work of evangelization. Every gift that God has given or has placed in our hearts, it is important. Some gifts such as preaching, teaching, and prophesying seem more important than others such as hospitality or service. But remember, God has given all of these gifts to build up his church. None is less, none is more important. None of these gifts should be looked down upon or treated lightly. Therefore, whatever it is your gift, look at it as that treasure that God has placed in you. And if it is the work of administration, it is the gift that God has given you. Not everybody can do administration. This is true. The moment we understand this, we stop fighting. But why do we fight? Because we have not understood who Christ is. In fact, because spiritually we have not matured. We have a crop, a crop of Christians 
whose main duty is to go to church on Sunday, others to go to church every day, and then they end at that point. Going to church alone does not guarantee you spiritual growth. Because you can be going to church for PR purposes. How many of us, if you are a Catholic, how many of us Catholics attend Holy Mass, yet we cannot even explain simple things of the liturgy? Why does the priest kiss the altar? Why do we genuflect in, instead of um, bowing? Why do we prostrate instead of kneeling? Imagine some of those small, small things. Yet we are daily mass goers. Some of us, we go for mass every day, yet we cannot lead in prayers. We can't. If someone tells us, just come, ejaculatory prayers, come and say a prayer. We are shaking, shaking like the reed. <laughs> Other times we cannot even fight for our faith. Why? Because we are immature or co completely we are lost. I want to say this again because I know it doesn't sound good. Going to church every Sunday does not guarantee spiritual maturity. You can be going to church every Sunday and you remain a spiritual dwarf. There must be some personal effort. And understanding where Christ is in your life is the key thing. And pursuing a personal relationship with him. Haven't I said in the past that God does not save nations. He does not save congregations or families. Or even clans. He saves individuals. My dear friend, as you seek to grow spiritually, make it a personal effort. We will pick tomorrow and we'll be picking gifts one after the other. Allow me to bless you now, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Wednesday.